Hey, when was the last time you went to the beach? Dude, I love the beach, but uh, I'll never forget the last time that I went. We were hanging out with the fam and some good friends, and one of my friends had brought an inflatable raft. And so there I was, just soaking up the rays, floating in the shallow water, or so I thought. So I'm laying there with my eyes closed. After several minutes, I lifted my head to realize that not only was I way far out to sea, but I was what seemed like a mile down the beach. It was crazy. I mean, it was like, did I get teleported? And I started freaking out because I realized that I had been caught in a riptide. I mean, I was lucky that I had a raft keeping me afloat, but I can't tell you how scary it was to feel that helpless and just completely at the mercy of the ocean, you know? And when we're going through the darkness, the hard times and tragic circumstances that we've been talking about in this series, I think that's a great picture of how we feel sometimes, isn't it? Like whether we're facing a tragedy directly or on the outside looking in, it's easy to feel hopeless and adrift, disconnected, like out of control. And I remember in elementary school, uh, a kid in my neighborhood passing away from some freak accident. I remember in high school having an actual friend that passed away from a crazy disease. It just totally rocked my world. Uh, and, and every time, like, some big fears dominated my mind. We're all centering around maybe three things. One, um, it's never gonna end. You know, like whether the tragedy is happening to us or we're watching it happen to someone else, this is what we wonder. Will this pain ever fade? Will it always feel as bad as it feels right now? Or we think it'll happen to me. I mean, I had never thought about dying from some disease until my friend passed away. And then I thought about it all the time. Or we also think, it'll happen again. Like I thought about this when I saw tragedies growing up and I still think about it today. There's a fear in the back of my mind that I'm, I'm never completely safe sometimes, you know? Even worse, I remember feeling totally aimless and disconnected from the one person who mattered most and, and the one person who I thought was most able to do something about the darkness that I was facing. That was God. You know, in the middle of a tragedy, most people end up wanting to ask this question right here, God, where are you? When you're in the middle of a time of darkness, it challenges your ability to trust God like nothing else can. And it messes with your emotions in a way that nothing else can. Like you may know something in your head, but what you feel may seem to go against everything you once thought was true. In, in a lot of ways, things that once seemed stable, they suddenly feel completely out of control. You know, just like being caught in a riptide that's pulling you away from where you wanna be. And that's why today I wanna to give you an anchor. And that's what today's passage is in a sense. It, it can offer us an anchor when it comes to what God is doing in the times of darkness. And this passage could potentially even change the way that you see pain and the way that I see pain. Now, the Apostle Paul was one of the central figures in getting the church started, not, not the church that you currently attend, but the entire movement of Christians. And more than anyone else, Paul put church on the map. And he spent his entire life doing just that, getting the message of Jesus out to as many people as possible. In the first century, Paul wrote a letter to the church in Rome. And during that time, Rome was a powerhouse empire. And you've probably heard about it in school, but when I say empire, I don't just mean a really powerful country. I mean, Rome had complete control over much of the world. And they didn't play around, you know? So getting on the wrong side of the Roman empire meant you'd die painfully. So during that time, people would generally keep a low profile and just kind of go with the flow. But the church and the Roman Empire, they didn't see eye to eye. Now, the emperor of Rome at the time was Nero. And many people believed that Nero had a strong hatred for Christians and even went so far as to torture and execute them. So it's safe to assume that the Christians in Rome were really familiar with tragedy and lived in constant fear of tragedy striking them or their loved ones or their friends. And, and so on. And at the time Paul wrote this letter, he was about to travel to Jerusalem, knowing in advance that because of his outspoken faith, his life would be in danger there. Some people believed Paul wrote this letter to Rome, believing it was the last thing that he would write. So when you read the following words, understand that they weren't written or read on a lounge chair beside a pool. They are written from the darkness of fear and pain. For the writer and the reader, life was very unstable. Tragedy was real and personal. And with that in mind, Paul wrote this. What then shall we say in response to these things? Now, when Paul refers to these things, he's talking about suffering, pain, heartache, tragedy. 
And then he makes an interesting statement. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. When tragedy strikes, we don't know how to respond. We don't know what to do. Like we ask big and heavy questions. And in response, Paul gives us the answer. It doesn't feel like an answer though. It feels like he missed our questions completely. But Paul says that when tragedy happens, when pain happens, when you're going through the darkness, remember what God has already done for you. He gave us Jesus. Jesus who put on human flesh and experienced pain and hurt and loss and even death with us. God entered into our pain and tragedy and hurt in the death of his own son. And our hurt doesn't surprise him and it's not foreign to him. He is with us in our darkness. But God isn't just in it with us. Paul says God is for us. Did you catch that? He did not spare his own son. He gave us his son so that we would have an incredible promise to hold on to. And here's how Paul says it. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You see, when Jesus rose from the dead, he defeated the darkness. And he didn't just defeat the darkness for himself. He did it for us. He defeated our darkness. And because he conquered the darkness, we can too. We are, as Paul said, more than conquerors. And it's not because we're able to get a grip on the darkness and figure it out. No, it's because he has a grip on us and nothing is ever going to separate us from him. This is how Paul says it. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Guys, you see, we live in a world full of darkness, a world where not everything is as it should be. But the one thing that remains strong and steady no matter what is the love of God. Nothing can pull you from the God who loves you. No matter how threatening the pain, no matter how slippery or scary the conditions, when we wonder where's God in all of this, he's there and his love proves it. The Christians in Rome, they had the same questions and fears back then that we have today. Like, where is God when terrible things happen? And the answer is the same now as it was then. He's right there with you, right in the middle of it. You cannot be separated from him. So you can face whatever happens. Even if it feels like it will never end, you can get through it because God is with you. Even if you're scared it will happen to you, you can trust that God is with you and he cares for you and he won't let go of you. Even if you're afraid it will happen again, God is with you now and he'll be with you then no matter what. A tragedy might separate you from a loved one, but it cannot separate you from God's love. A divorce might separate you from a member of your family, but it cannot separate you from God's presence. Sickness might separate you from health, but it cannot separate you from the comfort of your heavenly Father. Nothing can pull you from the God who loves you. Your fear, your worry, your uncertainty in what comes next does not compare to what we know to be true. And that's that God's love is bigger and he is for you. Now, this doesn't make tragedy easy to go through, no. It doesn't answer all the questions, and it doesn't guarantee an easier life. In fact, Emperor Nero eventually took Paul's life. But even as he died, Paul held on to this anchor. Even when he felt devastated, he never felt hopeless because he knew that God was beside him every step of the way. And as we've said throughout this series, there's no quick and easy answer when you're dealing with tough or tragic times. But that doesn't mean that there's no hope. There is something you can do in the darkness. And it may seem simple at first, but it's extremely powerful. And it's this, you need to create an anchor. If you're on a boat in the middle of a storm, an anchor can keep your boat from drifting to help steer it in the right direction against the wind. In the same way, when you're going through the darkness, you need to hold on to something, something solid, a phrase or an idea that can provide a dose of hope when you're feeling hopeless a peace when you're afraid, security when you're anxious. So when you're hurting, find a truth to hold on to and hold on to it as tightly as you can. Like write it down, put it on the lock screen of your phone, put on, on a note card and tape it to your bathroom mirror. Don't just create an anchor, like hold on to it. And for me, that anchor, that truth is the very thing we talked about today. The idea that nothing can pull me from the God who loves me. 
That's my anchor in the storm. That's the truth I hold on to, and you can hold on to it as well. So wherever you find yourself, whatever you face, nothing can pull you from the God who loves you. He will never leave you. Nothing can separate you from him. And when you realize that, your fears will begin to shrink and your confidence in God will grow. So as you head out today, think about this. What if, what if, what if you were 100% confident of this truth? What if you were sure that God is with you? Because no matter how unclear life is, no matter what you're facing, you can hold on to this. God is bigger than the darkness and he is with you no matter what.